What's up guys, it's D Mills. Welcome to my studio. A lot of the drum stuff I'll do, I'll use these V drums for instance, and I'll run a project called Superior Drummer. And they probably got like some of the realest drum sounds for not being a real drum set. I would say a lot of it is um, this kit over here that's in the corner, which is um, like my 60s Slingerland. Um, it captured like the old school thing, but it captured a lot of more newer things too. And then that snare is like a, I think a 69 or a 70 Ludwig Superphonic. And then I, I record a bunch of percussion stuff. Obviously I have a bunch of samples in there, but I like real percussion. Like a lot of my songs, I don't do a lot of looping. I literally will play something all the way through for like the whole three and a half minutes, just so it kind of feels like a bunch of dudes in the room, even though it's just me by myself, you know? So I keep uh, some random like percussion toys. This shaker's on a bunch of stuff. This tambourine almost gets on like every single song I make. Um, what else is in here? Another little tambourine, sleigh bells, another shaker. This bottle right here, this was some of the best water I ever drank. And then I was like, it's such a good water. I gotta um, see how it sounds. I do a lot of ghetto stuff too. Like I've used ink pens and cartons and all kind of stuff. Like. If it works, it works, however you can get the sound. Let's talk about keyboards, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, and a half. So this is a Rhodes, it's a Mark II Rhodes, I believe from 1981. And what's special about this Rhodes is it was given to me by my mentor, uh, Dr. Gail Serdan, a lady who taught me how to play piano. And then the Moog up here, little fatty um most of the like crazy key bass sounds you hear and a lot of the synth leads uh come from this guy this is the the roland juno 106 this one's from the 80s this one's actually one of the ones from japan so i have like the whole japanese power supply and a lot of the synths, especially when you listen to the beginning of my album like the first few songs it's really heavy on this this synth right here Got my Nord Electro 3, and then this Studio Logic SL 88 Grand. This is by far to me the best MIDI controller to play piano on. This is actually like wood keys. It literally feels like a piano. And then you pair this with like a, I'll use Keyscape, and it just sounds phenomenal. So if I'm sitting here going through sounds, I'll have this little Arturia up here. So I can literally just not have to run to that MIDI controller to find stuff. I can sit up here and be creative and engineer at the same time. Uh, the board I use, this is a SSL uh, Nucleus. So it's got two analog SSL pre's and it also has a uh, ethernet. So it's completely linked uh, to Logic, which I'm using. So I can mix and go through every sound and pull up all kind of parameters all through here just by using this controller. And the one thing I really love about controllers more than actually uh, touching faders is that the jog wheel lets me get through a song really easily and just being able to zoom really quickly in and out, it just like speeds up my workflow. This is my UA LA610. I love this, it's a preamp and a compressor limiter. This Nero is like a really dope monitor controller. Um, I use the Yamaha's HS8s and then I have the two uh, Avatones. Like I use those usually for mixing because they, they're really, <laughs> if you can make those sound good, then your record will sound amazing. Um, so yeah, I could switch through all my 
different monitors here. If I want to use the little speakers, the big speakers, I have a sub under my desk. Shout out to QSC. It also has a talk back. So when I'm recording people in here, if they're all mic'd up or if they're out of the room or whatever, I could easily talk to them wherever I'm at. I don't have to have a separate mic for that. Let's talk about this rack, my Atari MX5050. I'm super old school. I still love the way uh, tape sounds. So my whole album Prism was uh, mixed down to tape. So when you hear it, it's all tape. That's why it kind of has that warmth to it. I use the Universal Audio Apollo. I use that, I love UA stuff. It works super well with what I do. Then I have uh, my Neve 1073. Then I'll use pretty much for every song that I did on that album, I use this API 5500 on my mastering chain um, to EQ all the songs. This is another like well-known limiter, the uh, 1176, the Distressor. I feel like everybody should have like one of these. These just make things sound amazing. And I just run everything through this patch bay. If I have everything labeled and I can just try different chains and pop in and out of things um, really quickly with this. Under here, I even have this, uh, my Space Echo. I love this the Roland uh, tape echo and it just creates like that original tape delay that everybody loves. And then shout out to Aguilar, I've been with them a while. I keep my AG700 down here and I'll patch this through my patch bay. Um, as well as my pedal board, another shout out to my boy Johnny Gomez at Cute Rigs who helped me put this together. Um, this is some of the stuff I'll use. Like it's kind of a hybrid of a guitar and bass. I kind of use it interchangeably. Um, Guitar players, this is a bass overdrive, but it sounds amazing on guitar. I highly recommend people trying that out. Got a telly back here. I feel like everybody could use a telly because I think I got all the guitars that do the things. Like, you know, I got the Strat. This is a Strat I kind of put together. It has a lot of pickups in it. Um, Gibson. Uh, let me hold this Les Paul. So thank you, Gibson, for that. And then this is my own Gibson uh, 390, which is similar to like a 35, but it has the, the P90 pickups. This is my Fender PJ, and I put some Aguilar pickups in it. This is probably the bass I'll never sell. This is uh, my 66P bass, all original. I still got all the shells that go over it. And this thing, um, I keep it with flats on it. It's just super old school. It's the, that Motown kind of thing. And then this is probably the heaviest bass I have, my, my 75 Jazz bass, which was the bass that was in the, uh, the car with me when I got in my really bad car accident a couple years ago. The, the impact from the crash was so strong that this bass was in the back seat with the seats down. It launched up into the ceiling and in the soft case was hanging like this out of the ceiling and i thought for sure this bass is probably gone and we pulled it out and the tuner was loose and it had a little nick right here and that was it and it works fine i guess they don't build them like they used to back in the day they were built to last forever so this uh shout out to ortega they gave me a super beautiful classical um, anything that's acoustic is that. People always ask about it, is this a fretless acoustic? But um, it sounds cool and I use it every now and again, but there's not enough stuff to use it on. And then this is my custom F bass that they made me. And the last two songs on the album uh, ha have this bass. The only other five string I have is this my hollow body Ibanez, which gets heard a lot on the album. Um, my upright, I use this guy. I think the only thing he was on on this one was the, the intro of the album. I was bowing it and some pit stuff on it. And then this 
This guy is super cool. It's one of my favorite things I picked up, and you hear this all over the album. This is a Dan Electro. They call it a baby sitar, and you play it like a um, like a guitar, but it's the sitar sound. So yeah, that's that thing. Yeah. I literally only use one amp. I use, um, this is my favorite Fender amp. This is the Fender Pro Reverb, and this one's from like 69 or 70, uh, Silver Face, and it sounds amazing. To me, if you can only have one amp, to me this amp does everything I need it to do. No, I had to step through, step no fear that you looking for the old me. Yeah, I'm not here until my vision was distorted, but it's so clear, should have seen what I was given when I got there. It's my um, keep a lot of them in this case. Uh, Lou, it kind of gave me this one. I love this one. It's a LCT A40. It's like a tube mic that I use on a few records. Um, the little Neumann RE20, uh, 57, 609s, SM7B. This is a, what is this? A 414 AKG a Cascade Fathead, which is a fairly inexpensive ribbon mic that sounds really good. Um, and then I found um, this old mic. This one's probably from the 40s. This is an old RCA uh, 74B. So this thing sounds incredible and I use it a lot on um, with drums, like doing room mics with it and overheads and stuff. And I also, um, of course, on vocals, sounds amazing on. I really spend a lot of time like also with the decor with a lot of the posters like I keep my favorites and the legends around me you know my tapestry my plants it just kind of like keeps me in a vibe to be creative so and I hope it inspired you to uh, flip your room and make a make a space that you can just fall in love with you know stay creative and uh, God bless talk to y'all soon